What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to kick off our AT&T to 2 litre stroker engine build that's destined for our Lupo AT&T track car. It's a fantastic little car and it's getting to the point where it's really actually quite reliable. Now my old man used to tell me if it ain't broke don't fix it but I've always sort of struggled with that one. More of a fix it till it's broke kind of guy to be honest. But before we get with grubby hands on that pile of parts back there, I think there's some things to consider first. You know, like what's the spec going to be? How we're going to get it? You know, are we going to go for all our power or is it going to be manageable? All sorts of things to consider. It's like the inner engineer and is just trying to get out, trying to <laughs> make sure that I do a good job of it in all honesty. But I've come up with four points that I want to achieve on this build. So I think it's worth considering. And if you're a novice engine builder, then you never know this waffle might actually help you. If you're a seasoned engine builder, well, you know, you can turn off now if you want, who cares? But uh, yeah, four points to get through, let's get into it. Number one on the list has to be power, doesn't it? I mean, let's face it, there's no point in building an engine, a forged engine, and not heading for more power. At the minute, we run an AUM motor with a K04 turbo, and it makes a peak boost pressure of about 1.4 bar, about 270 brake horsepower. That plus the Pelican limited slip diff just means that it's an absolute hoot, an absolute scream a second. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the track day footage. This thing is ballistic. The only thing with that though, if anyone knows K04 turbos, honestly, they run hot, they really do. I mean, nuclear fission runs cooler than a K04 on track, it really does. They run so hot that I don't even run the car at that full 1.4 bar on track. I tend to aim, depending on conditions in the track, a bar, 1.1, maybe he's pushing to 1.2. And for that, let's face it, I'm probably only achieving in the region of 230, 240 brake horse, which in an 800 kilogram car is a lot of fun and it upsets a lot of people. But, you know, I want more. I want more, it's as simple as that. <laughs> but how much do I want? Well, at the minute, Let's face it, if I have about 230 usable brake horsepower on track and I'm going to go to the expense of the engine build and all the rest of it, I'm going to be pushing past that 270. If we go for a bigger frame turbo, then I think it's only sensible that we'll add 100 brake, 100 brake horsepower. So target for this project will be 330 brake horsepower, usable brake horsepower. Peak brake horsepower could be higher, so 350, 360, who knows. So I'm going to have to choose a turbo that will get us there. And I'm obviously going to have to modify the engine in such a way that that will get us there and support that as well. So power for this project, 330 brake horsepower of decent, usable power. Uh, and I think that will do me. And that will lead us pretty nicely on to point two. There's no point in building a stonking little turbo track car uh, if you're only getting out half the time. Or if you go to a track day and you know, you get past sighting laps and that's it, you're back in the pits, it's broken. Can't be having that. Like I said before, we're actually getting to the point where the Lupo is actually quite reliable. So if I go and up the power, if I don't like rein it in with a decent a level of reliability then and what's the point? I'll just be wasting my money, my time, my effort and you know, we make some crap videos, wouldn't it? So, without a doubt, even though it sounds a little bit boring, reliability is at the absolute core of this project. This thing has to work. It's as simple as that. And the reliability factor will be in absolutely every part of the project. Everything from the parts that I choose to the way that I put it together and the way that, you know, like, I will beef up the surrounding system. So the fuel system, straight away, we're going to have to up that. Boost pipes, going to have to be modified. We're going to have to up that. We're going to have to add water meth, I've already said that before, but we're going to have to add that. All of them supporting systems to make sure that the engine package works and make sure that it's reliable. We're going to have to do all that. So that's, you know, it's part of this project. The engine build, I mean, it's just that part of it in all honesty. Because there's, there's all sorts of stuff that we're going to have to involve as well. And then on top of that, it's going to have to be mapped well. And considering I'm going to be mapping it with the Ignatron, oh, I, best, I best get me skates on, isn't I? So yeah, without a doubt, the whole package the engine, the parts, the way it's put together, the mapping, it all has to 
bring reliability because only then will it be fun. I like tinkering with cars without a doubt but there's nothing more soul destroyer than having to replace the same thing again and again and again. It's just no fun whatsoever. So, so without a doubt reliability, reliability, reliability. Point number three. No, I haven't turned into Greta Thunberg and I'm not talking about Miles the Gallon. But, you know, it might actually surprise some people that a tuned motor, a well set up and efficient motor will actually do better Miles the Gallon than a stock motor. I mean, say for example, you've got a stonking 2 litre stroker motor with G25, all efficient pipework the lot. There's a good chance that put it next to a stock motor, you know, something like a BAM. BAM! You hit the loud pedal, all hell breaks loose. But without a doubt, cruising, uh, a well set up, efficient motor will perform well. And, you know, we're just diving into the whole Badger 5 mantra there, all about the floor. Uh, and it really does work. I mean, Bill's proved it for years and years, as have many other tuners. And I've even seen it on my cars as well, the ones that I've tuned. I mean, my S3 used far less petrol than a stock car as long as I just kept it nice and easy. As soon as I put the foot on the loud pedal, it all went a bit mad there, but just cruising around town, and especially on motorways, the setup was so efficient, the pipework was all done well, they had a big foot mount intercooler, the exhaust was very free flowing, the turbo setup was brilliant, I wasn't using any boost to do so. And I mean, if you break it down into simple physics, you've got like a tuned motor that's well set up, it produces more power, then it obviously takes that engine less effort to produce the same amount of work as a stock motor. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. And all these points, they tie in really nicely to what will be my final project outcome. So, I mean, this is a track car. This pile of parts here, they're, they're gonna be a, a track engine. I wanna be able to work this setup hard to have as much fun as I can. But at the same time, I don't want it to be hard work for the setup so that it's detrimental to the engine in itself. I don't want to melt this after three laps, without a doubt, no. And that comes into the reliability. So, you know, I'm trying to make a setup that's as efficient as possible to keep the temperatures as low as possible, so therefore I don't create Chernobyl under the engine bay. That's that's all I want, and that's how I see efficiency comes into the setup. I mean, you could have some junky old tractor boost pipes all over the place, but it would just be awful. So, efficiency, high on the agenda. Not as high as power, like but it's still there. It's a biggie, there's no doubt about it, but you know, in terms of the budget, if I spent a load of money on this, then it would get away from the fact that this is just meant to be a cheap little track car. That's all it's meant to be. It's not, it's not you know, my absolute dream car. It's not, you know, like I wanna plow all the money into it, and it's never gonna be the best handling car. It's just a fun, cheap little track car. So when we're going and we're doing stuff like this, it, it, it literally, it can't bankrupt us. It can't break the bank. There's no doubt about it. And it's for that reason, you're not gonna see a G25 turbo. You're not gonna see a NoTech manifold. There's not gonna be massive bucks spent on it. We're gonna do all the work ourselves. And even the, even the parts, I mean, most of these parts, I was actually collecting over years so that I could put a stroker motor into my S3. You know, the one Spencer chopped up. At what point do we report it strolling? But now I don't have a use for them. It just makes sense. Get them used, push the loop a bit further, you know, do it, but don't break the bank. And, and most of these parts, I actually had amazing deals on them to start with. I've done part swaps with friends for, you know, rods and, sumps and all the rest of it. I bought the pistons and the uh, crank dirt cheap a long, long time ago. So it's almost like I haven't even spent money yet. To, to collect all the bits on this bench here, I probably spent about two or three hundred pound. It's not much at all. So I'm not gonna break the bank with a, a much bigger stunk and turbo as well. I'm gonna try and keep it modest. I wanna be able to reliably hit my power uh, figure, but not doing it by breaking the bank. Plus, I've already sort of uh, decided what the next project for the channel is going to be. I'm not going to tell you, by the way. But I can't go spending loads and loads of money on the loop ball when, you know, probably it's best if I keep a little bit back for that one. So without a doubt, budget is at the absolute forefront of all of this. 
And I mean, all of them four points that we've discussed, you know, the power, the reliability, the efficiency, but it all has to come under that budget, without a doubt. I think that's four things to consider. And I think they're really important. Let us know in the comments what you think of that. If you think there's any other points to consider, if you think that I'm just waffling shite, tell us, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, and yeah, we'll get a discussion going. So anyway, that was my take on it. Hopefully that helps you out if you are thinking about engine building and you, you, know, you think, should I do it? Can I budget for it? You know, am I gonna do it to a decent enough standard so therefore it'll be efficient to make the power you know, and all that comes into the reliability as well. You can't just junk hoses together and expect it to work in six months' time. It'll just rattle itself to bits. It'll be a whole load of shite. So, without a doubt, you've got to put some thought into it. And, uh, and anyway, that's my take on it. So, if you found this video useful, then by all means, hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see this engine build come together. And uh, thanks for listening as Waffle. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.